Happy Friday, everyone. Jason Jacoby here with the world's best father-in-law, Mark Boyer. Oh, great. Is that my father-in-law <laughs> gift? Kind of, or happy Father's Day? Yeah. That's awesome. Absolutely. Well, happy, happy Father's, Father's Day. Day. To you. Yeah, oh, and well. to you as well. And Love to, you the father. to all you dads out there and all the roles that you play in your family's life. Um, hey, salute to you. Incredible responsibility. I tell you this all the time, but I'm going to tell you, if you're a father... Your role is incredibly important yep. in your children's lives, um, whether they're young um, and even as adult children, uh, still a place where you can speak wisdom and have major impact. I love being a dad. It's yep. great. Me too. It's super fun. But we got a lot of info for you this week. We really wanted to focus on, um, in this closing bell, international investing. Mark and I have talked a lot about that with our clients. Not just this year um, when it's starting to pick up again. Not a lot. Not just last year when the markets, uh, the European markets, emerging markets were uh, in the tank a little bit. Yeah. But for years, right? It's part of our diversified philosophy, our diversified portfolio. There's always a place for international investing. Um, so we can kind of dive into that. We want to go uh, on a three-step process here. We want to first start talking about interest rate environments internationally. Moving to how uh, you know that affects with currency in the U.S. dollar as well, and does it strengthen, weaken? How does it affect it? And then move into international markets, which is kind of the fun part. So kind of like a little reverberating effect yeah. through the world economy. So let's let's take a quick trip. Where so do you want to start. Let's start European Union. Okay. So interest rates have gone up there, 25-year highs, just over three percent. Obviously, still lower than ours yes. here in the mm -hmm. United States. Yeah. And then we got the U.S. now with uh, with our our, our policy. Uh, we maintained a uh, our current Fed funds rate. Yep. Five five and a quarter, I believe, is the bottom yep. right now. Yep. Correct. And yeah, it held steady this week on interest rates, and then basically said that they're going to pause for the time being, but may you know increase it again in in the future. Which oh, I hope I they know. don't do that, but it is possible. And I have no, I don't have a lot of confidence on. I mean, I'll just be honest. <laughs> Me either. This is. <laughs> yeah. This is being videoed, but yeah. I don't have a ton of confidence. In the past, they've always over, they just overdo it because they're looking at backward numbers. And, yep. you know, we don't even know what the banking issue uh, for the mid trust banks, uh, you know, we talked about this before, you know, that's still out there. And, yeah. um, and so anyway, I just hope that the pause, um, we'll see, I just hope that they're ready to pause longer than uh, some people think. Yeah, let those rates kind of bake into the cake a little bit. Yeah, the last see what year happens, hikes, right? right? It takes yeah. at least six months to let yeah. those things kind of fester and get fully worked into the economy. So it would be nice to see yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. Great. I'd love to see that. So third side of the coin, well, there's only two sides, but third side of, of what we're going to talk about today, China. Okay, so we have European Union raising rates, Great Britain more than likely raising rates this week. We kept it the same, and China actually, um, they have no inflation problem. They have a reopening issue from having those long exponential COVID lockdowns and a housing bubble that they're currently experiencing. So they're trying to devalue the currency, stimulate the economy, yeah. cut rates, uh, increase exports, slow down imports. So they're just trying to juice their economy a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> lockdowns forever. You know, it's a communist country. There's yeah. no freedoms. You know, and we won't get in a long term. I mean, that's, you know, unfortunately, we need to be great to see uh, them open up more as yes. far as for their people. Um, yeah, so won't get political yeah. today on this. But the fact is, is that and I've been to Beijing uh, just a few years ago. It's a, it's a lot. There's a lot of people. OK. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they they locked them up. And I got friends there who were locked up in their apartment buildings for months. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's kind of crazy. We've seen we've all seen the video. Right. But now that's. Now they're opening up and trying to get it going, and just uh, it's going to take a while for that to, you know, supply chains have kind of opened up. They've gotten better, but anyway, it's going to take them a little while. And they're kind of, uh, you know, they're 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 wild cards. Like they just do things yeah. looking after themselves, um, you know. Which, yeah. So this is what's happening. So they're gonna they're gonna lower rates and uh, to try to stimulate that. And so you know. I think that's uh, yeah, it's an interesting play, but we'll see, we'll see how that goes. I, I, it's hard to talk about China because it's just so many things. Involved, <laughs> but, but they are, you know, it's an interesting that uh, it's stimulation that should help uh, actually for their exports. Yeah, and um, you know, help hopefully help the companies. Wise, yeah, so that's good. increase corporate profits. Hopefully, so that's their goal, obviously. So then let's talk about the relation to the U.S. dollar here. So obviously, with the European Union um, central bank increasing rates, kind of makes their their um, government debt maybe a little bit more attractive. 
where uh, again, the US dollar, still king dollar, still the world reserve currency. There have been um, attempts to dethrone that and um, bring in other currencies, yeah. China, Russia, like you had talked yeah, about. Yeah, we talked. Uh, yeah, we talked about that before. But you know, this isn't new. Where they're trying to to usurp the dollar as the as king dollar. Um, but you know, Russia, China. There's talk. It's been in the news, um, and I know a lot of circles are super concerned about that, uh, as I am too. I mean, they're watching it. You know, um, yeah, digital currency, long term. Yeah. There's lots of things that are out there that mm -hmm. are concerning. But right now, dollar remains sort of the uh, the, the main currency. And um, it's going to take a lot to change that. Um, and so, you know, interesting, the dollar's been high. I mean, up a few months ago, um, yep. it's, it, but it's dropped about eight and a half percent. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, eight yeah. and a half percent right. in the last n a number of months, which still fairly strong. Um, but, you know, again, that helps international investing. Um, so, you know, you got Europe that's had basically no growth. Recession yet, now. Yeah. yeah, recession. But yet international stocks have actually... Uh, up, you know, especially the first few months of this year, have really outperformed uh, mm -hmm. the U.S. And that's mostly because even you know, a couple of things, one P ratios, but other way, the falling dollar really puts a tailwind behind those those economies and those those companies over there. So let's talk a little bit more about P/E ratios for those people that don't know what that means and how we look at that in comparative in comparison to value for an index or a company. Yeah. So P ratios, price to earnings, stocks price to its earnings. It's always been a long-term gauge of a, the the, um, the value of a company in, in a portfolio or, or the economy. Mm -hmm. um, over the last number of years, our P ratio of the S&P 500 has you know, traditionally been about 16%. Yep. Okay? Okay. Currently, I think we just see, I think this week, we just said 19, 19%. So yeah. the markets have really moved, and thus our companies are valued much higher. P ratios are higher. All that means you can have high P ratios for a while, um, but it just it just means that they're you got a, a lot of stocks get priced for perfection at that level. So it just it makes the tendency of like if there's a, you know a recession or something happens, those stocks can get hit. So we're at higher P ratios. Where when you look at international, you know they have a 15 year average of about 13 and a half, yeah. so much lower than our average. Right. And their stocks are you know a lot of them current PEs are like 12.7. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so lower than their average. So yeah, so yeah. the P ratios are lower, um, and emerging markets are even bigger right now. They're at like eleven point eight, mm -hmm. and um, their their longer term average is you know eleven five. So so they look like better values on the P ratio. You know, you, yeah. you've got for example, you know, like Apple's a great company, right? But absolutely, and you know, over and it's it's higher than twenty. His P ratio is above twenty five. Yeah. Okay, so absolutely, that's really high. Where you got Samsung. Okay, which yep. is, you know, it's not Apple, but they also like they got. I mean, they're all over that. When I was in China, it's Samsung. Yeah, outside the U.S., of Samsung's even yeah. better. So they're, you know, theirs is like twenty-one. Okay, mm -hmm. their PE ratio. You know, uh, so there's just there's just opportunities when you compare. There's there's great values and, and better values actually in the international and companies. A, and the, to your point, which again, we'll look at different industries. A lot of names that we even know uh, that are based internationally. For example. You know, you look at the PE of Procter & Gamble, right? It does household products for us here in the United States, 22.8, yeah. yeah. which compared to Unilever, again, they own a lot of the big brands that we have here in the U.S. as well, 17.5. Yeah. Hershey, 25.7 to Nestle, uh, 20.9. Eli Lilly, uh, which is like medical equipment and yeah. products and That's things really... like that, 35.4. Yeah. AstraZeneca, uh, 17.1, 17. so yeah. very similar. That's what, what I'm saying, so the, the, the valuations are much lower which gives them, it makes them attractive uh, for an investor. So and international investing has come back as of late? Yeah, so I mean, you know, uh, if, <laughs> so we've been talking about international investing and, and it's been a part of portfolios for a long time. You don't remember, but there's just times in, in the cycle of things that yeah. international investing will outperform the U.S. It's been about uh, almost over 10 years since that's happened. Yep. So. Not saying it's happening now. Um, you know, obviously, still like investments in the U.S. Yeah. Um, but um, but it does beg the question whether in our portfolios uh, for our for our clients, you know, start if you've been opposed to it, yeah. um, you know, dip your feet in the water because I think it's it, you got to get your toe wet. I mean, you got to you got to start thinking about having some aspect or some allocation of your portfolio to the international piece because. 
could be a time where in the next few years it outperforms. We'll see. And going back to that 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 uh, statement about the U.S. dollar weakening, so when you have a, a international company or you own international stocks or investments, yeah. you convert those to U.S. dollars. Uh, it actually helps enhance those returns, yeah. right? Those total returns, yeah. because if currency's stronger over there, weaker over here, convert to U.S. currency. That's that's that's, good that's great for your yeah, portfolio. Yeah, so, so so those are the outside. Those are the kind of the secondary forces that are involved in U international investing. But again, remember. Um, uh, the, uh, the other thing is, is that we always think about, oh, I don't want to invest in Europe. I don't want to invest in those companies. But you just gave right. examples of individual companies that are in those countries yeah. that are really good, solid companies. Exactly. And so mm -hmm. our management, what we're trying to do is find, um, you know, the people that are helping us do that. They're finding those opportunities yep. even in, in a, an economy that doesn't look great. So long term, exactly. it's, if we're long term mm -hmm. investors, it's definitely a place where you want to have um, a piece of that pie. Great wisdom from uh, from El Presidente right here. We appreciate his his knowledge and wisdom, and I know I've learned a lot. Hopefully, you guys are learning a lot each and every week. Sorry, the video is a little long, but get a lot of good information in this that you can take and and kind of relay to your friends this weekend. But again, Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Celebrate with your families, your friends. Barbecue. It's actually nice outside today. It's been great hopefully for over a month. <laughs> hopefully, it lasts. But uh, but we'll see you next week. Thanks Happy so Father's Day. Happy Father's Day.